Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mike at Fieldcraft HQ. On behalf of Black Rifle Coffee, pro tips. Today, we're going to talk about mobility and its importance and significance in your life. Some of the ways that I think about mobility are reflected based on my experiences as a contractor and also an active duty guy in special operations. When we looked at equipment in our vehicle, it was life-saving equipment that we paid attention to um, in every facet. It's, it's like the idea of going hiking and paying attention to ounces instead of pounds. All the le little details are gonna be what saves your butt, especially in the worst case scenario. Most people just look at their cars as vehicles for transportation of their physical bodies. What we like to do is include this idea of mobility. That's why we have Fieldcraft Mobility. So you pay attention to the advantage that your car serves and its capacity and capability of all the things that are inside of it. So this is our visor panel, for example. Our visor panel has the ability to stow med, first aid and trauma, in this case, a stop the bleed kit, and also survival contingencies, mylar space blanket, survival kit, uh, including the ability to sanitize and purify water, capture the water, uh, signal, the list goes on. So when I have this, one of the important factors is what's called ready access. When you're using a tourniquet, for example, right here on this side is our tourniquet holder. This tourniquet holder would have a TAC Med Solution Soft T wide. If that was in there and I needed to use that, it likely would not be the best case scenario. I wouldn't conveniently walk over and go, yeah, let me get my tourniquet out. If it was for me, it's the worst case scenario. I'm likely upside down, hanging from my seatbelt, bleeding out of a brachial or femoral artery. That's important to note because a lot of the things that we set uh, in our lives for convenience in this idea of contingency-based planning are going to be introduced into our lives, used for the first time in the worst case scenario. Ready access is I could reach up uh, with one extremity and be within arm's reach of that life-saving equipment. In addition to that, for this particular case, I could rip away the entire package of equipment that I need. Uh, I often reflect on uh, an experience where one of my team sergeants was tragically killed in a motor vehicle accident. I was on the scene of the accident and I didn't have ready access to equipment. My first aid pouch was molly tethered to the back of my Jeep seat. So, in that case, I had to reach into the pouch that was Molly tethered, or I mean, I could have removed it by cutting it or, you know, if you've ever messed with Molly, it's a pain in the butt to try to remove. So instead I grabbed all the contents of my med pouch and then dropped it next to the casualty, which was my friend and my team sergeant at the time and trying to save his life. So when I made this visor panel, the idea was you could Molly attach it, but you could also use Velcro. Velcro's sim simple and effective at adhering our kit, but also uh, turning it into a QD quick detachment solution so I could bring this kit to the casualty or remove this kit, put it in a loadout bag, put it in my backpack so there's no excuse. Um, I also have this idea with all the life-saving equipment that we introduce to civilians especially that it's convenient for you, it's comfortable for you. The bottom line, if it's not convenient, you're not going to use it. And I, I myself and my own habits have uh, a bucket full of holsters that I've used. Uh, it's slightly uncomfortable and then it just winds up being added to the plastic. So that is the idea to remove it, have ready access. And also it's in the visor. Uh, in addition to this visor panel being up on the visor, you could rip the entire panel and remove the entire thing. So you could attach this to loadout bags, to your go bag, uh, or take it with you to treat the casualty with life-saving survival. Like this Mylar space blanket is critical, especially in Stop the Bleed. So now I have the access to both survival and med. Let me walk you around the other side. The mobility loadout bag is something that came from that idea on that tragic day from that accident. A lot of mobility type things we take from um, military applications. Like uh, the idea of Molly, that all stems from the military. But when we take the Molly adaption or the military adaption and we put it in a vehicle, it should change. Like, here's a perfect example. This is a survival pouch that's made for this mobility bag. 
Now, what you'll notice about this is how wide it is. Why? Because this isn't your body armor. The reason body armor and pouches have to be streamlined is we don't want to run into everything around us, but in a vehicle, you have more capacity or more room. So this is set up for a vehicle with vehicle thinking in mind, not just a translation or transition from adapting military equipment and putting it in your rig. So what this does is it goes on the back of a, uh, a seat. You have access, just like you do with the visor panel, of med, survival, and even uh, an additional pouch for GP or general purpose use. You have the Molly centered, but what I think is most uh, effective about this is that you could integrate this into a bag. And I apologize for the, the lighting. I could remove this, and now I have a low-vis backpack that I could take this on the go. So flat strap so it doesn't uh, push out this form factor. I zip it up and there's no excuse. So if I'm in a situation where, let's say I'm going camping or hiking and I have one set of this because this is my life-saving equipment, I now can remove it top and bottom, zip it up and take it on the go. Um, or worst case scenario, this is my bug out bag. I always advocate that you look at your vehicle as your bug out rig but what happens when you run out of gas? What happens when you get to your limitation where now you're stuck in the middle of the wood line in your rig and now you have to make the decision to bug out or remove yourself from that vehicle and displace on foot? Well, I don't wanna be stuffing things in my pockets. If I can have ready access to all the life-saving equipment I need, then this becomes my bug out bag where I could displace on foot from the vehicle and still have all the things that I need to survive. The idea for everything mobility is the mobility platform or your vehicle is an extension of your rucksack. If you carry a tourniquet on your person, which I re recommend you do, then you should have a robust um, upgrade level of care in your vehicle. So you should look like a medic, your vehicle should look like an ambulance, and your house should look like a hospital. That's the comprehension of progressively evolving your preparedness skill sets into capability and capacity and all the things that surround you in your normal everyday life. Vehicles, safe home or your house, um, or the things that you carry on your person. So these are a couple items that we integrate with our tourniquet holder, uh, some of the things that we carry in house like ready hour, um, shelf life food that lasts up to 25 years, lickies and chewies, um, fishing knives, hunting knives, the list goes on. Guys, this is only the start point. This is the baseline. These are the pockets that allow you to stow all your capability, and this is where we begin. Again, it's mobility, Philcraft Mobility on Instagram. Um, also, we have overland experiences all over the nation. If you prepare for the outdoors, if you prepare for the overlanding in a trip or an adventure, then by default, by benefit, you're preparing for the worst case scenario. Till next time, guys. Stay alert, stay alive.